This woman was an honest servant of the city. Today she was buried with military honors. Tomorrow is the deadline for the Red Mask Gang. Shit. Leaving work, Jack caught sight of a scarecrow with a dagger through his eye. The handle engraved with the letter S. This man was an honest servant of the city. Today he was buried with military honors. What's going on guys? Zombified Gamer here. Welcome back to This Is The Police. I'm moving on to day 11 now, but I've had to go back and play some of the other days again because when I tried to play day 11, well, this happened. Jack is dead. Well, shit. So I've gone back and done everything that the Mafia wanted me to do, basically. So I've been letting them fuck me, essentially. All City Hall employees awarded company cars for personal use. Small drug dealers invade Freeburg and Freeburg to host semi-finals of Hockey League. Who the fuck cares about hockey? It's just men beating each other up with sticks. Come on. I'm too tired, I can hardly walk straight, can I go home? No. My brother went hiking in the woods and disappeared, I want to go help. With the search, can I have the day off? I drank too much and I don't think I can hold it together, can I, can I go home? Why are so many of my cops just taking the day off? It's annoying. Just do your fucking job. Please be advised, we are unhappy with the efficiency of the police department. I don't fucking care. Fuck off. I've got to fire someone, really. Okay. How about... Ellis? Please be informed that the employee complaint against you has been passed along to the prosecutor for further investigation. Yeah, that's another thing. Someone put in a complaint against me for some reason. It might be because I'm letting the Mafia do their thing, but I don't know. I don't know who it is, which is also annoying. City Hall cannot meet your request at this time. Well, fuck you then. You bastards. Bill Buckler reports that two unidentified men snuck onto his farm and set fire to the barn. As the call came in, the two criminals were attempting to gain entry into the house. Yancey and Birdie should set them straight. There are no signs of the criminals near the house, the front door has been broken down and shadows lurk inside. That was fucking easy. A drug addict attempted to hide an expensive bottle of liquor under his jacket. When he was caught, he began to throw a fit. Is he a fucking child now? Why are all these days so slow? It's like fuck all happening. Jack, one of our new guys, tried to rape an accountant. We locked him up in our hotel room, but he's threatening to hand the whole organization over to the police. 
I think it's time he talks to a police officer face to face. Jack, we have something going down at the city centre at 1839. We wouldn't want any policemen crashing the party. I think one grand should be enough for such a request. Only one, really? One grand's fuck all. Give me like ten and then I'll be fine. A woman reports that she saw a skinhead attacking a dark skinned valet. Striking him around the legs, yelling, I'll beat you until you're a dead freak, no shit. I'm gonna do it. She believes she saw a pistol sticking out of the skinhead's belt. Fantastic. Situation's more serious than we thought, requesting reinforcements. Okay. Attempted murder, this should be the Mafia's thing. A man in an expensive suit is lying in the street. It seems he's been shot, but no one saw who shot him or from where. The man is still alive, and in an ambulance is on the way. Okay, I'm gonna have to ignore it. Because it's the Mafia. Gotta let them do what they want. Otherwise they'll shoot me again. Thank you for doing as we asked. Here's the amount we agreed on. Well, we didn't agree on it, you just said this is your payment. Oh, and another thing, I don't think I have any officers dead yet. Because I know I accidentally got a couple killed before. It's only civilians that are dead, apparently. Just not officers. Eight-year-old Kevin is home alone, hiding under the bed. Unknown persons are gathering outside the apartment door. Is this going to be another bullshit call? Just in case I'll send two. Because I think we're nearing the end of the day anyway, so... We should be fine. Oh, it's not a false alarm this time. Okay. Send a couple of good guys in. Hope that'll be enough. That's all I can send. Okay, it worked. That's good. I think the next shift should be fine. Maybe put another detective on there, just in case. Because you never know. Something might happen. In my new role as corrupt official, I had to give up some of my favourite habits. I couldn't turn off my phone when my head ached. Couldn't sleep till noon on Saturday and let the rest of HQ take up the slack. No more days off to go fishing. But my weekly visit to the old colony club was more like tradition. One night a week, I absorbed cigar smoke, the vague smell of alcohol, the stench of urine, all mixed with toxic levels of old drunken belches. Same picture it was 30 years ago. Tradition's got to be honored. And to stay faithful to the tradition, you've got to respect the standard rituals. When you're about to roll out of the club, 
you need to take a deep breath and count to a hundred. If your stomach doesn't do a backflip, you should be good to make it home. This time I only got up to sixty. I was interrupted. Why? You look even better than you do on TV. There's nothing more impolite than approaching people in the alley at the old colony. This is the most private place in the city. All who enter here dirty their shoes with the most elite stream of vomit in Freeburg. This asphalt has been blessed by judges, lawyers, artists, businessmen, and all our politicians. Takes a lot of balls to crash the party. My head was a drunken haze, but I knew who he was. A cartoon gangster suit straight out of Dick Tracy. Fancy voice, fruit cologne, sassy strut. That's how the newspapers described Vikis Varga, rising star in Freeburg's criminal underworld. He appeared out of nowhere, and with the support of the local punks, Varga broke all the old rules of organized crime. He killed those who could not be killed, traded what could not be traded, and robbed those who could not be robbed. In just a single month, this man had gathered an incredible amount of power. He's been called everything from a clown to a madman to a criminal genius, and more often than not, he's called a low-class upstart short on ideas. But if Vargas was one of the old crime bosses, He'd have been cut into pieces and fed to the river. Look past this guy's arrogance and there's something about him. The city is still deciding what to do with him. Meanwhile, he's burning down the houses of old city mobsters. Not the best time to talk, Mr. Varga. No, oh, you know my name. I'm flattered. Although not very surprised, to be honest. I might be a little short on manners. Like they say in your fair city, with the right manners, you can go anywhere. Well, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay right here. Even the criminal world needs manners, Mr. Varga. And one of them is this. Don't interfere with a drunken cop who's trying to take a shit and puke at the same time. Oh, you exaggerate. But is Freeburg always so gentle with its officers? You've been a bit roughed up lately. I see you already know Freeburg quite well, Mr. Varga. Well, I love to learn and look around. But I do know that the inhabitants of this fair city should be friends, Jack. Maybe it's true I don't have the best manners. After all, it's only polite for friends to share their phone numbers. This city of yours moves so fast. I feel like I'm hooked on amphetamines all over again. You wake up in the morning full of ideas, and by nightfall, you've all had each other killed. So don't wait too long to call. I don't mind if you're drunk. It's all the more fun. I'll be stoned myself, most likely. Hell, I'm a little stoned right now. It's the only way to live in this place. I like your city, Jack. I'm here to stay. If it weren't for the phone number written on my arm, I probably wouldn't have remembered the conversation in the morning. But there was no reason to worry. I'd be getting a reminder soon. Orthodox Priests Bribe Mayor Greek priest to be appointed head of Freeburg Orthodox Church Students volunteer to help farmers My morning ritual was plagued by the smell of Vicus Varga's fruity cologne it was like the sharp citrus scent was chasing me around the house, as if Vickers was right there in my living room. When I finally realized the smell was coming from a big basket of oranges, it didn't put me any more at ease. I'd opened my door to lots of threatening mail, evidence of criminal wrongdoing, even a dead ferret or two. But fruit? Never. 
You the fruit guy? Excuse me? Was it you that brought the basket of oranges? Nah, it was here when I arrived. Fine. So who are you? Today, I'm your driver. And uh, where are we driving? To work. That's it? Yeah, we have to make an important stop along the way. Where? The ranch. What ranch? Just the ranch. Fine. The morning seemed surreal, and I took in the magic. Why wreck it with meaningless chatter? As my tight-lipped chauffeur drove an hour through God knows where, I started to feel like I was in the middle of a bad dream, probably lying bloody and concussed in the alley behind the old colony club, my nose buried in a rotten orange peel. But no, this was no dream. The silence was real, the sound of the engine was real, the dust was real enough too. And there was the ranch over the horizon. It all seemed familiar. The San family's overbearing mansion has been the talk of the headlines for decades, but few have managed to get closer than a few miles. I guess I'm just lucky. I didn't know you took private meetings, Mr. Sand. Only if I expect good company. I'm surprised my company ranks at all. Today, yes. Today is a special day. So it seems. Do you often go to the old colony club, Jack? Every week. Meet any interesting people there? As a rule, no. Sometimes you make a date, right? Sometimes make new friends. Sometimes, I guess. But that's not why I go. And why? I consider it a hobby. Hmm. A hobby? Do you know anything about my hobbies? Well, judging by the half dozen animal skins I stepped on walking over here, it's not much of a reach to say you like hunting. Love it. Well, I say that now. It seemed so tedious when I was a child. Took ever so long. But now I'm older. I've developed a new talent. What talent is that? Patience. The will to wait for the right moment. Let's say you want a deer. You know, you deserve it. You've even decided what dishes its meat will go to and where you'll mount its horns. But to get that deer, you've got to wait. To sit in the bushes and stay nice and quiet. Professional hunters will tell you that the hunt is a rare craft. There are many rules. It's shrouded in mystery and ancient skill. Well, that's all complete nonsense. To get a deer, you just sit on the sidelines for a long enough time, pinpoint the moment when it's finally time to shoot. I learned the talent, Jack. But not like you, oh, Jack. You truly are the master. I don't understand. Oh, come on, Jack. I know about the half million. I know your plan. Kendrick told me everything. Needless to say, I'm impressed. While some people learn to hold their breath for minutes on end and not to rustle the leaves too loudly, why you decided to just become the foliage. You turned yourself into a bush, surrounded by deer who've been so fruitfully multiplying for decades. But all this time you've held your rifle at the ready. Uh, forgive an old man his imagery, Jack. I have the heart of a poet, I confess. Look, I don't know what was said between you and Kendrick. But it sounds like you got it wrong. Oh, I think I understand everything just fine. And I think we understand each other quite well. Jack, in the coming war, we'll make excellent partners. What war? One war falls upon every generation. My grandfather drove out the Ambersons back when he was 27. My father destroyed that psychopath gangster, Boris Bell, when he was a sprightly 30. At 69, I'd begun to think my war had passed me over. But my time has come at last. Tomorrow, Vicus Varga declares war, and I'm obliged to answer.
So we're talking about Varga now. I don't know how he thinks. I don't even know whether he plans his actions or not. I can't divine his purpose. Hell, I don't even know where he comes from. He's a man not of our breed, wouldn't you say? But when he arrived here, I invited him in, told him we could work together. An official invitation penned in my own hand and written on some very expensive paper. And can you imagine his reply? A fruit basket. What sense can be made of such a message? I guess it means whatever you want it to. Precisely. I'm late for work, Mr. Sand. You know, Jack, I could just give you half a million right now. Cash, whatever denominations you like. But I would never insult you so. If I went stalking my prey for so many years, I wouldn't want someone else to shoot it for me. I understand you, Jack. And I'll never ask you for anything that's contrary to your nature. Just think about our conversation. Think about it. And call me. Like I said, it's a whole new life, and I've had to give up some old habits. One of them, keeping away from things that don't concern me. Now I can't afford the luxury. This spotlight I'm under, concerns is all I got. I had a feeling it would make me choose between the two, but I don't know which one to go for, because I don't really know anything about Varga whatsoever, other than he's a criminal. But I'm going to go with him, I think. See how that plays out. If it doesn't go well, I'll just reload it and go and choose sand instead. Tell him it's Boyd. Yancy didn't come into work today. Asano didn't come into work today. This is fantastic. I'm too tired, I can hardly walk straight, can I go home? No. You've got the same excuse, so no. And you've got the same excuse, so no. What is wrong with my officers? Fucking Jesus. I've got a lot of messages to go through, great. Sorry, yeah, Cole. This man was an honest servant of the city. Today he was buried with military honours. I don't recall him getting shot. So apparently one officer died, but that's it. Just the one. Please be informed that we are calling in two of the employees who initiated the complaint against you for official interviews. So there was two employees that don't like me? Bastards. We are concerned about the low effectiveness rates of Freeburg's finest. Specially authorised inspectors have been invited to visit the department. Tomorrow's going to be the day, don't let anything happen to him until then. I can't remember which one the hero is, so... Fuck knows who I'm supposed to be protecting. We received a call from the club manager who said that a brawl broke out in the main hall involving over 20 men. Security are keeping backs because some of the combatants are carrying knives. Several wounds wounded are already lying on the floor. But no one knows why the mayhem broke out. Okay. I sent three people in on that one, because this is a big one to start the day. Last 
Shit. I should have sent the SWAT in, I think. This is not good. Two teens walking their dog got into an argument and eventually one of them unleashed the dog on the other. The police were called by a girl who was riding her bicycle nearby. Cool. It doesn't usually tell me who the caller is in that situation, but whatever. It's a bit weird. Okay, everyone's good. So now hopefully they'll come back pretty fast. A boy is struggling on the ground, barely holding off the angry dog that's trying to grab him by the throat. If you pull the dog by the collar, it can easily just turn its neck and bite your wrist. So that's not really a good idea. Hit it with a taser, maybe. Shooting this guy's not really going to do anything. The dog lets the boy escape, and its owner starts to flee. Okay, just run after him. Wonderful. I think if it was a, if it was a higher starred cop, it would have been fine. Parishioner Maria Serpentine reported the sounds of gunshots inside the church. A bearded man in a hat entered the confessional, and then a minute later, I heard a few gunshots. Then the man calmly left the booth, took his hat off, and crossed himself and sat down on a pew. I think he's praying. Do I have enough time to wait for my other guys to come back? Let's see. I hope I do. The officers are needed for official questioning. This will take a few days, during in which time they will be exempt from all duties. Coachy, how fucking dare you? Why are you going against me? I liked you. I gave you stripes. You bitch. Okay, my other officers are back now. Apart from Coach, because she's running away to tell fibs about me. Little bitch. Linda Howard, her words slurred, said the dentist paralysed her face during the last visit. The monster struck me with some kind of poison. Arrest him. Are you sure he didn't just give some morphine or something? And you're a bit loopy from the drugs after your operation. Offender caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. Loot found, non-automatic weapon. Officers found non-automatic weapon at the crime scene. What do you want them to do with it? Bring it to the police station. Don't give it to the mafia. The girl was injected with normal painkillers. Yeah, exactly. She just had normal drugs, and she went a bit loopy, and said some crazy shit, because she was delusional. An ice cream vendor noticed a suspicious black bag, which has been lying unsupervised on a bench for the past few hours. This is Christopher G. Sands Ice Arena. Should we fucking bother? He's a knobhead. But we should anyway, because we have to. Otherwise he might not be happy and he might shoot me.
The investigation failed. All detectives are dead or fired. Since when? Motherfucker. Officers arrived on the scene and observed that there is someone moving inside the bag. There's something moving inside the bag, not someone. Open the bag, stay back till the bomb squad arrives or shoot the bag until it stops moving. Just open the fucking bag. We need to do some paperwork for this dead employee. How did he die though? That's my question. Who killed him? Well, I'm going to leave this episode here. Leave a like if you enjoyed watching. Don't forget to subscribe and goodbye. <laughs> you ain't scared. Yeah. Things that go bump in the night. Me. Uh, I got a zombie on me and you can't harm me. Yeah, who do you, who do you?